I bet you can see that living with diabetes affects all aspects of my life. Now, sexual relations is an aspect of my life and diabetes does affect this in both physical ways and mental slash emotional ones. So let's talk about the physical ones and I will rattle off some statistics. 50% of men with diabetes report impotence and 25% of women with diabetes report vaginal dryness. But usually these things are symptoms of other issues and attached to other uh, health problems. So I'm good uh, and I don't necessarily see the correlation. Where I do see the correlation is when my blood sugar spikes, uh, the side effects of this um, are things like headaches, blurry vision, fatigue, stomach problems, general feeling of awfulness, and they basically make you want to feel, well, they make you feel like you don't want to do anything. And so when you don't want to do anything, you don't want to do anything. <laughs> so you want to stay balanced, so you feel better and feel up to it. Uh, now, sex sexual activities are also physical ones, uh, you know, so they're kind of like exercise, and in that way, if you begin and your blood sugar is high, it is going to go higher. And if you begin and your blood sugar is kind of low, you're probably going to go lower. And uh, so it's not fun if you're in the middle of things and you're wondering, oh my gosh, am I, am I doing damage and is my blood sugar going high? Or oh my god, am I about to crash and, and, and pass out right here? Yeah, you don't want to be thinking about that in those moments. So it's a good idea to stay balanced. Now, here's where I think diabetes has like the greatest effect um, on sex and relationships. It's, it's mental, it's emotional. Having diabetes really does make you feel like damaged goods. Um, you can get over this, but it, it happens. And you kind of find yourself asking, you know, who's going to want that? Nobody's going to want to marry all this, you know? But... Two months after my diagnosis, I found myself in a two and a half year wonderful relationship. So someone does because you aren't and maybe they do. Yeah. And then I also remember uh, mentally going from injections to my insulin pump. Yeah. So one of the main reasons I didn't want this guy is because I'm constantly attached to him. I'm like tethered to this thing. And, you know, I was like, what man is going to want some woman who's attached to a medical device? Uh, it's going to be a huge turnoff. Now, despite feeling like this, I, I did it because it was going to be the best thing for my health. But what I did not factor into my little pity party is the fact that men love video games and technology. So basically, I have a Game Boy attached to me, and <laughs> it's definitely not a turnoff. It's, whenever I pull this thing out, they almost turn into 12-year-old boys and, and exclaim, like, cool, and, and start asking questions. So that's why I kind of don't mind saying that I'm a cyborg now. Anyways, I, I think the biggest thing that's, a, that's, that's had an effect on this aspect of, of living with diabetes has also been my attitude, my attitude towards having diabetes. And... This is because, like, the first guy I was with, the one that I spent two and a half years with, you know, we really didn't talk about it. Um, I was hiding it from everyone that I came into contact with. So this was reflected in my relationship. And he was a dream, and he knew about it, and he made sure I was okay, but he didn't really ever get involved in my management of my disease. And this is one of those things that kind of takes a village. Um, you know, he never felt like it was his place, because I was still, like, walking around trying to, to hide things from, from everyone. So he was sensitive to that. And then the next guy will... The easiest way to put this is it was a dark period in my life. And it's completely reflected in how I managed the disease, which is poorly. And I had the worst A1Cs of my life. So my numbers were horrible. And what's surprising is he was actually really adamant about coming with me to the doctor and buying me this little scale that would measure my food and sit on our kitchen counter and so I would be better able to titrate insulin. But we never ate at home and whenever I say I needed food, we would end up at the same pub every day because that's where he liked to drink. And the menu was really awful for diabetics. So basically every three months he would spend one hour being supportive. Um, 
and the rest of the time the relationship was actually really detrimental to managing this thing. I will say though, during that time, I did become a lot more open about having the condition, and I think this is because I had to, uh, in case something went horribly, horribly wrong. And uh, the fact that my shame for having the disease was completely dwarfed by the f shame that I felt for allowing myself to deteriorate and I, because of the choice that I made to stay in a terrible situation. So thankfully that's over, um, but the lack of shame has lasted um, for, for having this. And I don't conceal it anymore. Now, I don't flaunt this condition at all, but when people ask about it, I don't get uncomfortable. I, I actually try to make them feel more comfortable, and men pick up on that, you know? And so when I say I have diabetes, even if they don't know one thing about diabetes, uh, or know terrible, scary things about diabetes, they go, oh, okay, because they see that I'm okay with it. And if I'm okay with it, then they're going to be okay with it. All right, I was gonna publish this thing without saying this, but I'm sure this is the thought on everybody's mind. So, um, so insulin pumps, yeah, you can disconnect them or choose not to disconnect them and end up throwing them around the room. <laughs> this is attached to you. Um, and the other thing is, all right, so I was on a plane ride uh, and I, I sat next to a type one diabetic and you know who you are, because I think you're out there probably watching this. And uh, and and we were talking about this, uh, but you know, skirting around it. But somehow, somehow we finally got on this topic. And he was explaining to me that the tubing is very resilient or or, or strong or something like that. And and he kind of was like, like get it. And and I kind of went like, yeah, like you know, like in agreement, because I wasn't gonna be like. What are you talking about? And I still have no idea what you meant about the tubing. <laughs> Cheers.